What's up welders? In this video you're going to learn how to make a bar stool just like this one here. This video will be about how to mark out the components, cutting them and then tacking it together. I'll be using basic shop tools like a 5 inch grinder and my bench will be a piece of particle board with some folding panel stands. I'll show you that you don't need a flash welding table, expensive welders or expensive polishing gear to make high-end products that you can sell for good profit. Target market for this sort of furniture made out of 316 stainless will be someone that lives close to the ocean or in a small executive apartment with a smaller balcony. These people are prepared to pay a higher price for a quality product that will last for decades. A score is a decade. Who knew? So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you keep up to date on all my latest projects. The material is 316 stainless, 2 inch by 2 inch, with a 1 16th wall thickness, or 50.8 by 50.8 mils and a 1.6 mil wall. From here out I'll be talking in the metrics because that's what I usually use. I've, before I even bought the material I worked out all my cut lengths and I knew how much material I needed to limit the wastage. This is a big job with eight stools and a large table, so I'd only recommend the project to a confident DIYer. A mate has pre-sold this set already, so it's time for me to hustle. I have a free download of the materials required in the description below, or if you wish to purchase the drawings. A massive shout out to Joko Engineering YouTube channel. He drew my design and free CAD drawing software. You don't need expensive CAD programs to design projects like this. Just download the free software and away you go. Joko Engineering has excellent tutorials on FreeCAD. I highly recommend you checking them out to get you started. When you're handling the stainless steel, take extreme care. It's got a 180 grit grain finish on it, so if you ever drag it across the bench, you may scratch it and then you'll spend forever polishing the scratches out. I'll show you how to do this in a later video. Before you do any marking out on each length, just check it for square on both sides. To prevent the steel clamps marking the stainless, just put some painter's tape on the clamping faces. Just keep an eye on the tape in case you need to reapply it. Or you could TIG weld some copper onto the faces. But if you use them on carbon steel, you run the risk of small pieces of carbon steel being embedded into the copper and that leads to scratching resulting in rust stains on the stainless steel. I like to use a very fine tip marker to mark out my cuts. If you're using a scribe and make an incorrect measurement, you'll have a useless piece of material from the deep scratches. And on that note, I find window cleaner works really well in removing the marker if you make a mistake. It's best to avoid acetone and thinners if you can. To speed the cutting process up, I mark the waste area from the 1mm cutting disc. This way I can do 3 or 4 measurements in one go and then I can bust out the grinder. It's a good idea to clamp the tube down when you're cutting out your pieces. It gets painful re-clamping each time you need to turn the material over, but it sure beats having nasty gaps in your mitre joints thanks to your bad cuts from the material moving around. I'm using one mil cutting disc to limit the time and the heat input each cut makes. These are iron free so they won't contaminate the stainless steel. I wouldn't recommend using these without a guard. If you accidentally twist the disc or it grabs the quite likely to explode. This is bad news for every car person in any reality TV program ever made. Num soon. They never seem to use guards. If you're enjoying the video, cast your eyes to the subscribe button. Don't you think it'd be fun to press it? Hey, why not click the notification bell? Once you have done your cuts, it's a good idea to deburr the edges. This will prevent any scratches in the material and any stitches in you. I am fortunate enough to have a second grinder for a flapper disc. I wouldn't recommend sanding discs for this job. They catch the edge really easy and launch the grinder out of your hands if you're not paying attention. For the bottom braces I've used 25 by 50 rectangle tube with a 1.6mm wall. These are all square cuts so a 5 inch disc cuts through both sides at the same time. I find it's mostly 4.5 inch grinders on the US Amazon and Home Depot. Why is that? If you could leave a comment in below, that would help me out for a lot of the reviews I'm doing. The heat generated while cutting the stainless with the 5 inch grinder has discoloured it slightly. It's easier to get rid of it now before we put it together on the job. You can just see the purple colouring here. With any of the square cuts on this project, make sure you just grind it enough to remove the burrs. If you put too much of a bevel on it, 
when it comes to um, mating the two surfaces together, it won't look right. Once the 90 degree cuts have been deburred on both the 25 by 50 and the 50 by 50, run the brown scotch white pad over it. I brought a 5 pack and it's easy enough to do all of the items. There is a link in the description below. Be careful here, only go with the grain and have the discoloured end leading. For longer pieces don't go back and forward or you will see the change in direction. I've designed the set to have all the screws hidden so they screw from underneath. When it comes to the seat base pay particular attention to which way the angle is facing with the 45 cuts. The plans do show which way the legs are facing on the angle but we have all been in our own world and made a simple mistake like this. Always have the plans close by when marking out the cuts or any holes that need drilling. I highly recommend using a pilot drill 8th inch drill bits work great and they're pretty cheap. Stainless steel is different from regular carbon steel. It becomes very hard if you don't use a sharp drill bit or plenty of cutting fluid. If you see your drill tip turning blue, that's bad news. Either sharpen the drill bit or get another one because it isn't going to be any use to you now. You're my boy Blue! You're my boy! If you don't have any cutting fluid or your shed's a mess and you can't find it, a can of CRC or WD-40 works in a pinch. To deburr the holes, if you don't have a deburrer, just go up a bigger size than a drill. Deburred holes just make it look so much more professional. Apply decent pressure and use a slow speed on your drill. Now we have the components for the steel cut out, we can start to fabricate it. Before clamping the pieces into place, it's good practice to check to see if the face of the tube that is to be polished is flat. If it's sunken or proud, Gently tap it with a hammer. Keep checking it until you don't see any light from underneath the straight edge. The easiest way to do this is use the particle board as a square. I'll put one of the legs down one side, grab a top, put that on the other side, and that should pretty much be square. I'll clamp it down, just putting a little bit of pressure on. You don't need to over tighten it or you'll dent it. Line up the mitres, check it with a square, and good to work. This is Sparky. He's a 200 amp ACDC razor weld, branded in the US as the JASIC or JASIC Pro in the UK and Unimig here in Australia. I've used Sparky professionally for two years now and he's never let me down. It is very compact so if you do a lot of on-site installations it's very easy to throw over your shoulder. I'll be doing an in-depth review soon so I'll have a link in the description below. I have the machine set at 50 amps for tacking. This is about 20% more than welding just because I want to get it tacked fast with a lot of penetration and a low profile weld. As a rule you tack the outside edges first. Stainless moves a lot and it loves to move on fillet welds. Once that's done, flip it over and repeat. Once I've got the other leg tacked welded, I check the diagonal and the two measurements should read the same. If they're not the same, it's at a square. Once it's all good, I put the 25 by 50 mil tube in. I've set the face of the 25 by 50 back from the 50 by 50 face, just off the radius. This gives the stool a clean look with less work in welding and polishing. Give the angle a good clean before tacking together. TIG welding and stainless steel need clean surfaces. This is where you need the acetone. I wouldn't advise using brake clean. It can release some toxic gases. The frame is the same as the legs. Just line them up with the bench top, clamp them down securely and just tack the outsides first. And then checking for square after each corner I tack. For the angle frame, I turn the amps up to 70 for tacking. Again, I'm tacking the outside first. I use the button on the welder set on the 2T function for tacking. This means I press the button down to light up and as soon as I take my thumb off, it starts to tail off. I've set the tail off to half a second because I don't want to wait around. I've got eight of these stools to make, so I need to hustle. That's all the components tacked up, 
Make sure you've subscribed and check the notification bell so you see when I release my next video. I'll be showing you the welding sequence to limit the distortion or any sinking in the stainless tube. If you found it helpful, I'd appreciate a comment and if you didn't like it, hit the dislike button twice. Cheers.